Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Saidi, and I'm here presenting for the Approach team. I'm so excited to be here, and I just want to start by thanking the Deutsch Foundation, the Future of Information Alliance, and the University of Maryland for this generous award. Um, building Approach has been challenging, but for every challenge, it's been equally rewarding. So um, again, thank you, everybody. Some of our team members are here today, Jessica Walker, Jara, Dan, our mentor, um, Dr. Jason Farman in the back, and JB Wills uh, unfortunately couldn't be here today. Um, he's taking a final. Um, he, he did a lot of our programming for Approach. So um, let's start by going to that slide. Um, I want to start by talking about the FIA priorities that we really feel like we tackled with um, Approach. And first of all, culture. So storytelling is such a big part of American culture, it's a part of every single culture. And so what we really tried to do here was to take different stories from people on campus, specifically for this iteration of the app, layer these stories together in a polyvocal experience where people could listen to them as they walk through different spaces on campus, right? And the point of that is to highlight difference. Sometimes there's these stories that we never hear, people's perspectives that we never get, and what happens when you put multiple iterations of those stories together on a theme or a topic as you move through a campus space that you might have been to a million times, it, it, we contend it can get transformed by hearing those stories next to one another. And this is where we also get to credibility. So this idea that what is credible information and what is information, you know? A simple story that someone tells of their experience, whether it's a professor who's retiring from the campus who's been here for 36 years, or a student who has um, mobility issues, getting in and out of buildings on campus because of different forms of able-bodiedness here. So we really feel like we've tackled these two priorities um, robustly in, in building approach. So what I want to do now is I want to play a little bit of our audio. So unfortunately, we can't all plug in our iPhones and go roam around the campus for 20 minutes right now and really experience <laughs> approach, although you all should do it. Um, but what I want to do now is I'm going to play a little bit of some of the highlights from one of our paths. So the way Approach is built is we have multiple paths. And the paths address different issues and they kind of coalesce around a certain theme. So the clip that we're going to play today is about insiders and outsiders um, and different perspectives of campus. What does the campus space mean? What does a building mean? What does a, a walk in a specific space mean on campus? And what does that um, what does that space feel like? So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to imagine while you're doing this. You're going to have to think about roaming through campus listening to this. And also um, what our app does is it brings together not only these interviews that we've conducted with multiple people, but it's layered with binaural sounds. So we have these special recorders that we bought that record sound how you hear it on both sides simultaneously. So to get the full experience, you really need to hear this on audio. Um, sometimes when, I've, when we've been prototyping it, I, I'm like, What's, is someone coming up behind me? Like, you don't know the difference. So um, I'm going to play right now four minutes of audio. There's a little bit of lead in. Um, so just try to get the experience as we go through it. Also, what you'll be able to see is the website that we built for the app, um, which I think is kind of amazing also. <laughs> All right. So. Turner Lab um, for two reasons. It's in some ways not lighter. Um, historically, tremendously important. Um, the slave cabins were probably in where the parking lot is now. The first buildings of the university were built by slaves. Um, it's been very controversial about how, whether to recognize them. I feel very strongly, as did the Black Student Union at the time, that it's important to recognize them because that's why I deserve a place at the table. That if I 
don't have outsider syndrome is because if my people built these buildings, then I get to be here. And so that's really important. And, and there's ice cream. Oh. <laughs> about the department uh, and about this space and you know the places that I do go it's interesting that you know every person has their own campus in a way because there's these different places that you know about and move through and um, even now there's buildings that I walk by I have no idea what goes on in them I don't often even know their names Maryland. Ears full of chirping crickets and trees, crowning sidewalks and brick pathways under feet. Swarms of students in warm daylight, thinking technology, sex, politics, dreams, death, dorm rooms, alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, meals, home, sleep, self, and next step. Students made of ass and aspiration, coarse material and torso, boredom and bone. I am small man on campus. I claim this land in, in the name of the broken shell turtle. I demand you answer me, H.J. Patterson. What makes you deserving of great Greek columns and sprawling steps? What right do you have to overlook this procession? And where in the hell is your handicap entrance? At least I know who Francis Scott Key was. He wrote the national anthem. I like the chapel bell as a sound, which is a kind of call. You can think of it as a call to uh, to some kind of you know, more peaceful state of mind. So that's a little snippet. Um, that path continues on for about 15 minutes. And so while you'd be walking that path, you would be going through various parts of campus, the reflecting pool um, up by McKeldin, and eventually that path ends at the labyrinth on the side of the chapel, where you're invited to actually walk the labyrinth as you hear the end of the story about how it was created and the people and the partners that brought it together and the, um, the place of meditation that it actually brings. So. Um, I, I hope you can get an idea of what we're trying to do with approach and how it really can transform a space. Um, just to talk briefly now about how we worked, we broke into two groups kind of at the beginning of the process, people working more on the programming and designing side, other groups um, working more on collecting um, audio, transcribing, but eventually everybody was working on everything. Um, it was also difficult to put it to turn it all around in a semester but we we worked really hard we also used Trello which is an app online to keep track of each other's work progress as we went through it and our partner organization WAMU really um, offered a lot of advice ideas and questions about how to best um, how to best write stories how to how to narrate, who to highlight, um, what, is, what is a good audio story, what is not, and how to, how to build that. I, I want to skip now, um, because we're running out of time, just to our next steps. So um, we have become an open source app already on GitHub. And if you go to our website, which is approachapp.org, can, anybody can download the platform to use this for whatever space they want to transform and collect stories for. So we've already accomplished that. Um, we want to work with AMU in the future to make this um, to make this platform also available and usable for their members, for these NPR listeners. Um, we also are 
um, playing around with this idea right now and in talks to work with the Lakeland Project that Dr. Mary sees from American Studies heads up. They have hours and hours of this rich audio and oral history that's already been collected. And we're thinking of um, approach would be a perfect fit for that. And we've also been approached by two, um, two other members. So a large museum in the Midwest who um, has, wants us to help curate an app, uh, help, help curate an exhibit. And then also um, the Woolly Mammoth Theater here in DC has asked us to um, also help use app to help curate an audio experience for their fall season um, in their lobby. So um, sorry we didn't get to share more, but I wish we could have just listened to 15 minutes of audio altogether. So thank you so much again um, for the support.